Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to speak to the photographers out there who are looking for a solution to tether from your camera straight onto a computer to be able to review your images straight away for a production. We're going to run through all the gear that we use for our onset solution. We shoot on the Canon R5 Mark II. The main difference and the variable that you'll notice between this camera and whatever camera you might be shooting on is the USB connector. The Canon R5 Mark II has a USB-C connection just here. So the second thing that you need for tethering is obviously a tether cable. This is the 10G Tether Pro Tether Tools cable, bit of a mouthful. These tether tool cables come in a couple of options. I chose to get the right angle connected for the camera. Makes it a whole lot cleaner because then it runs down through the jerk stopper. Third thing is a jerk stopper. This jerk stopper stops the tether cable being jerked in the camera and then destroying the cable or the input from the camera. So as you can see, if you're going to like pull on that, anytime it's pulling, it's pulling on at this point here rather than the plug itself. So you're going to save yourself a lot of money if you accidentally pull on that cable. The fourth thing that you will need is a device to tether to. We use the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip. This thing is lightning fast as the images are coming from the camera and being displayed on the computer it is really quick. Number five is definitely having a sturdy setup like this to put the uh, computer on. So starting with the top here, this is a, a Kupo tether plate. It is a great solution and, and probably one of the co most cost effective solutions other than making something yourself. It has the Velcro strap which comes with it to be able to lock in the MacBook Pro. It has a nice little rubber mat to protect from scratches. This is also really great as well. This is a junior and baby pin receiver. So depending on what type of stand you're using, you've got the flexibility of that. We are using a one of the shorter Kupo uh, C stands just here. So we just attach that. Nice and easy, nice and sturdy. There we go. Adjustable height. So obviously with the MacBook Pro, depending on how tall you are, you can move that up and down. We used to have just a standard turtle base without wheels and while it was sturdy and robust, it was just so clunky moving around on set. Getting the wheels here has been an absolute game changer, so I'd highly recommend wheels to any sort of tethering solution. Depending on what type of shooting that you are doing, you can also add in a tripod. We use just the Manfrotto with a um, just a ball head option on there and so it's, it's great for what we do, nice and light. Another thing that we have in our kit is a, a sunshade and so when we're outside we can pop up the sunshade, put the MacBook Pro in here and then it provides a whole lot of ease viewing the images in the bright sun and you can see nice and clearly. So this is a uh, tether tool solution. They have actually partnered with Think Tank to create this and as you can see it's you know packs up really small like a uh, one of your collaps collapsible scrims or reflectors and then just pops up and then you can run your velcro strap that you've got just here to lock it all down and you just run run that through with the computer on the inside and then you've got a nice little shaded solution there to be able to view your images with the sunshade set up with the computer inside for the purposes of this demonstration we're going to remove the sunshade just so it's a whole lot easier for you to see. Computers set up we just need to plug the camera in. Right so with cable management there are other jerk stoppers which you can get for the computer here because obviously if you're going to pull on the cable here uh, you could damage the computer or damage the cable again. So I like to just create an extra loop, just like so, and then I'll use just a clamp like this, do something like that. So as that pulls, that's just going to pull 
just down here and you can velcro this just as a secondary protector. So this is a real simple clean solution for a jerk stopper for the computer, just provides another level of safety. The software solution that we use on set is Capture One. It is by far the most robust piece of tethering software out there and if you're not using it for tethering then I highly recommend it. So as we open up Capture One, depending on your workflows, we usually just start with a new session and we title the session with the date first. So we would start with the year, 08.25. This is what we do with all our naming conventions for our projects. And then it would be YouTube, tut, and then tether setup. This is not going to be an in-depth Capture One tutorial. There's lots of stuff online that you can do to find out more about uh, Capture One. This is purely just how we set things up. So this is just a quick overview. So once the camera is turned on and we are in Capture One, we can navigate over to the tether section. And these are all our tether options here for the camera. We can control all the settings in the camera here, which gives us just so much usability on set rather than having to navigate to the camera and we can do it all within Capture One which is awesome. For the sake of this we'll take a quick shot see what's happening. I'm just going to set the camera on a scene so that we can test this shot. Obviously you can look through the camera if you wanted to get your correct metering. I'm just doing this so you can see what I'm doing here. There's a great little shortcut which I like to use within Capture One to fire the camera, which is Command K. And you can also click on focus to get focus of your, your subject. Images are coming through nice and quickly. I'm shooting raw. There we go. And just for the sake of this exercise, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna switch over to high speed continuous, just so you can see how quickly the images come through on the computer. So there we go, that was a burst. And just one more time, for example, and Joshua's gonna move around in the background so you can see. There you go, super, super, it's coming in super quick, super fast on set. One thing I will say, just in terms of that speed from the camera, if you want the fastest review option for the images within Capture One, you need to be able to have a really fast hard drive that it's reading from. So the, the best thing I can recommend is if you have a nice fast SSD within your computer, and you've got enough internal space for a full day shoot. We've got a, a one terabyte hard drive in here, 500 gig available, so that's plenty, plenty for what we need on set. That's going to be the fastest solution, plus it also eliminates any additional cables uh, that you have to run from the computer. Otherwise, if you don't have enough internal space, then I would highly recommend getting a really fast uh, external SSD, something with a thousand plus uh, megabits per second, just to improve the load speed of your images on the computer. You can also record to the dual cards within the camera and to the computer. For the peace of mind, I would always shoot to the cards and camera and to the computer as well, because the last thing you want is to have one data option and that go corrupt and you lose everything. So having multiple redundancies is best practice. This is great for a lot of studio work as well. If there's another TV screen, then you can do a, a, a cast to a TV screen where you can shoot here, have a secondary display for a client watching them coming through, which we do a lot on set for uh, some fashion clients that we do a lot of work for. And it just provides the ability to make sure that all the subtle nuances of uh, body movement, facial expressions, how garments are sitting, that the client can be really specific looking at that and signing off before we move through uh, other garments and things. A lot of the fashion stuff we do is high volume, so speed is of the essence and if we've got slow hard drives, if we've got um, slow cables and everything's slowing us down, the whole production is just that little bit slower. 
And when you add the compounding effect of a few seconds over, it might be, you know, hundreds of garments, those few seconds over four days can actually add up to a lot of time. So having speed and being snappy to be able to make quick decisions and move on is really um, a good thing for efficiency on set. So that's it for this video. If you're a photographer and you're tethering and there's something in your workflow that you think that we could learn, we love learning and we love hearing other people's opinions. So drop us a comment on what works for you. Otherwise, like, subscribe, drop us some comments below and we look forward to hearing from you. Peace out. Thanks for watching.